Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Today's video is about the importance, the necessity I may even go as so far to say uh, about asking for help, why we need to ask for help, why we don't ask for help, what stops us from asking for help, what are the beliefs we have about that. So this video comes up for a lot of reasons. Uh, I realized in my past, I always used to tell myself the story that like, man, growing up, I really didn't have a lot of guidance and have a lot of these people that would reach out to me or like, you know, mentorship like a lot of these other people had. And for a while I played the victim role and I was like, oh, woe is me. No one ever tried to help me out. And then I had the realization older as I got older and I was like, well, you know why I never, no one ever helps me out? Because I never asked for help. <laughs> I never asked for help. Um, and I think it's that simple. A lot of the times we recognize that there are things that we're struggling with that there's clearly someone out there that knows better than we do. Uh, but for whatever reason, actually for a lot of reasons, and I'll name a few specifically in a minute as to why we don't ask for help. I think personally, in my own experience, this has been one of the biggest character flaws or detriments I've had um, in my life. Uh, I realize now as, a, as I grow and I've hired a coach and a business mentor and a community, one of the reasons I'm growing so quickly with such a clear path and feel so good is because I have the confidence and guidance of a community and a coach uh, in order to support me to get there. And it's all because I realized that I needed help with my business. As I was getting back into training, I know I've always been a really good trainer, uh, but I needed business skills that uh, were less than adequate and needed to be developed, I'll put it that way. So now, uh, now that I've humbled myself and I'm asking for help, and I'm seeing the results of asking for help, opening myself up to support, to feedback, to learning, to growing, things are happening very quickly. I think one of the reasons we don't ask for help, or at least from my own experience, uh, and let me know if you can relate to this in the comments below, is because you think you already have the answers. I've been doing this forever, man. I've been lifting weights forever. There's no way I could learn something from someone who's only been in the game for two or three years and just started weightlifting. And there's a saying that, you know, the fool thinks he knows everything. The wise man knows he knows nothing. And for so long, I was the fool thinking that I know everything about everything. And even if I didn't know everything about everything, I am a smart, capable man. So let me go and learn it on my own. And there is truth to that. But what I've realized again is this is, yes, although I'm smart and capable, I can have the confidence to learn anything I want in my life. There are things that I just do not enjoy doing. And so many of the times we think that, oh, I'll figure it out for myself. And you can, and you eventually will. But I think one of the biggest benefits of asking for help is that when you do and you open yourself up to support, it saves you countless hours of time and frustration and headaches and you know letdowns and all these other things. Because here's the thing, here's an example. Could I learn to be a CPA and uh, you know, take the exam to be a certified public accountant and do spreadsheets and numbers and taxes all day? I know confidently 100% I could. Do I have any desire to do that? No, that is like the most dreading, uh, gross thing to me. And no offense to you guys out there who are in finance and um, who are accountants and things like that. It's your bread and butter, more power to you, man. It's not mine, right? And so I realized that. Uh, I'd much rather have outsource my accounting and have somebody do it for me. Could I learn graphic design and my own logo design and video editing and stuff? Video editing I actually will do, but you get my point. Yes, I could become a graphic designer. Yes, I could learn all these skills and all these programs. It's gonna take me a hell of a lot of time and energy and money to get to the point where I can make a logo that I'm happy with. Yes, I'd rather just hire someone. So here's what I've learned about asking for help. It saves you a shitload of time and money See, it, and the reality is no matter how good you can learn to do something, if it's not what you're truly passionate and specialized in, there's someone that's gonna be able to do it quicker and in the end cheaper because it'll save you a lot of time uh, and they're gonna do it a lot better than you because it's what they enjoy doing. So a couple of benefits of asking for help and I think, again, what prevents us from asking for help? Well, I think as far as a, uh, for men goes, there's the whole culture of tos toxic masculinity of you don't ask for help, you don't need help, what are you little bitch, you can't take care of it yourself, you can't do it on your own, you can't learn, blah, 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 blah. So I think there's that element. And then all of us have an ego thinking, well, I can just figure it out, oh, it costs 100 bucks, like I could do that, I don't know, save my 100 bucks. 
Um, but again, the reality is that person, that specialist, the service that you need done, the product that you need to get is gonna save you a ton of time and energy um, and money in the end when you learn to ask for help. So I think the biggest block, at least for me, was arrogance. And I've hinted at it a few times already, thinking that I already know the answer, thinking that I already uh, know what's best. And here's what's allowed me to grow a ton, even as a trainer. I remember when I first started um, a trainer now, certainly in the beginning I needed to get my ass checked and my ego put in place a couple of times and happened many times. You know, I studied for this uh, certification for trainers. It's called the Certified Strength and Conditioning Specialist Trainer. CSCS is the acronym. It comes from the NSCA, National Strength and Conditioning Association. It's the most reputable, like big dick certification, right? All the professional pro trainers and sports teams and professional teams all have it. And you have to have a bachelor's just to sit for it. So I thought I was hot shit because I passed this test. I go on a 24 hour fitness day one and my fitness manager at the time, he goes, uh, his name's Jose. Shout out to you if you see this, Jose. And he's like, all right, man, train me. And I was like, what do you mean train you? And he's like, take me through a session. Like, show me how to do stuff. And like, just doing that. And so I read this, you know, I have this crazy certification. I think I'm all smart because I'm, you know, how to calculate how many liters of water, uh, you know, 175 pound advanced endurance athlete needs for a, you know, 88 kilometer bike race at mild intensity, right? Like literally that's the type of like scientific know-how and understanding I was getting. And then my first day in the gym and my fitness manager's like trained me. I was like, I don't know how, I don't know anything. He's like, you don't know shit, fool. <laughs> and I was like, you're right, damn it. I don't know what I'm doing, man. So I was humbled from day one and I was like, okay, I've got a lot to learn. Like I have some knowledge now, but I don't know how to use any of this knowledge. And then I had another spurt where I started to get all these clients uh, in the 24 hour fitness I worked out, right? And it was really just cause foot traffic. There's a shit ton of people that came in that gym and you know, they always pawn you off. And if you sign up for membership, they give you a free session so you can get a free session and sell you on training and things like that. And some people really do, I, I feel like everyone will and does benefit from training from a good trainer. There's no doubt about that. There's a reason LeBron James works out with trainers, right? And all these pro athletes, um, you know, David Judge from the Yankees, all these guys, they all work out with pro trainers. Uh, strength and conditioning specialist nutritionist because again when you work with someone who's better than you are at what they do than what you have spent the time on learning they're always going to be better no matter what so that's just what they do that's what and if they're passionate about it then they're probably extra extra good at it because they just enjoy it so they've just gotten good good just putting in the hours so um yeah and next thing is when i started to get all these clients and thought i was hot shit you know the other trainers in there they're all really good they all have been successful and still are in the training game today, which says a lot. Cause I think most trainers drop out after the first like three or four years, like 80 or 90% of trainers don't last beyond the first three years. I think that's something, I don't know, something along those lines as far as statistics go. So I was really fortunate that the gym I was in had a lot of really good trainers that have all opened their own gyms and businesses and really do know their shit. So I learned from a ton of them, but I remember I thought I was hot shit uh, after my first year and a half training. I thought I was awesome. I was ready to move out on my own. I had a full book of business. I was doing like 200 sessions a month. Um, although at the time, excuse me, not making a lot because public gyms kind of rape you if you're a, sorry to use that word if that's triggering for anyone. Um, they really take your ass on training packages that you sell. Um, you really don't make anything when you work for another person if you're a trainer, um, unless you're running your own business. Um, but that's another topic for another time. So I thought I was hot shit. I was ready to take my whole book of business. I went out on my own and I moved into this gym that's like basically like a co-working gym space. It's called South Bay Performance Fitness in Redondo Beach, California. And a lot of the trainers that I had trained with in 24 hour had moved their own business privately to this co-working space. So, cause they were ready too. So I went in there and again, I thought I was hot shit and um, I didn't know shit. And what I realized is like training my own clients and I'm like looking around, I'm like, God, I feel so inadequate. I feel like I don't know anything. And I didn't, I didn't have the knowledge and the experience that I needed to. It wasn't until I started working out with my old workout partner, uh, Tome or Tao Physique on, uh, on YouTube. And he, and I went on his program and he taught me real strength training development. He taught me how to count my macros and all these things and educated me on all these things. And that was the first time I truly, really changed my body to be like, whoa. And then, um, it just all snowballed from there. So the point of the story is, 
it wasn't, you know, every time my ego was getting in the way from allowing me to grow and develop myself because I thought that I already knew the answer so that I could do it better. And, uh, that was just me being a young, you know, insecure punk thinking that I'm better than everyone else or needing to prove that I'm ev better than everyone else and I can figure it out on my own. So that's, the, I think, one of the biggest things that holds us back, at least as men, but I'm sure everyone, um, but specifically as men also, is the toxic masculinity. I can figure it out myself. I know all the answers. I'm not a bitch. I can do this. I'm smart enough, blah, blah, blah. I'm capable. I don't need you. And that's the whole lone wolf mentality that isolates us. So um, the more we are humble with where we're at and come to terms with the things that we don't know and open ourselves to receiving help, to receiving support, to receiving knowledge and experience from other people in their specific field, holy shit do we level up quickly. Because the funny thing is now as a trainer, all my best stuff was stuff that I learned from other trainers. All my best stuff is stuff that I you know, learned from working out myself and working out with other people that you just don't really know unless you're talking to other people and you're learning on their approach because you really can learn something from everyone if you've been in your industry for 20 years and there's this dude 30 years and there's this dude who's three four years into the business and you tell yourself oh, I know more than him you probably do know a lot more about the business than he does but you know what I guarantee there are still some things that you can learn from that person um, because as the saying goes only the fool thinks he knows everything the wise man knows he knows nothing that's what they always call true mastery true mastery is when you know, that saying comes along that the more you know, the less you know. Um, a true master knows he knows nothing. And that's, it's funny because that's how I feel with weightlifting right now. As I've opened myself up, yes, to the business side of things and I'm growing in that aspect and I'm super humble on that already. I'm like, I don't know shit. Like, teach me about business and I'm learning a lot. But even in my training, like I have have some sort of like base knowledge and experience where I feel like I'm adequate and I, I consider myself on an expert level. I definitely feel like I know more than the vast majority of the human population in exercise, science, physiology, nutrition, diet, exercise, biomechanics, all these things. I realize I don't know shit. And especially getting into bodybuilding for the first time, I've done these exercises for so long and I feel like I'm doing them for the first time, um, starting to work uh, with the coach with some of his guidance and stuff. And I'm, I'm gonna hire him within the next probably two, three weeks here um, and really officially get it going, which I'm excited about. But Again, notice the humility in my ability to ask for help. Like most people would see me with my, my shirt off or lifting weights and like, man, you're in great freaking shape. Like you must be an expert. And I do know quite a bit, but you know what? Again, the coach I'm gonna hire knows way more about nutrition and um, exercise and like programming and structure than I do. Even though I feel that I'm on an expert level, there's always more to learn. He knows way more, especially when it comes to bodybuilding. So that's why I'm hiring him. But had I not been open to, you know, one, have the humility, which I've learned over and over from the universe, thank you universe, to be humble um, and that you don't know shit. If I thought would have thought I know everything, well then I'm not gonna grow, I'm not gonna progress. And then in the end, I'm doing all my clients now and for the future a disservice because I'm not growing and expanding as an individual, so how can I teach them what I don't know? So, and then what I do think I know will change, it will grow and it'll enhance and it'll only allow me to be even more valuable and skilled in coaching and understanding the people that I wanna have an impact on. Um, but it all comes down to our willingness to be open to ask for help, to say, I don't know what I'm doing or I do know what I'm doing and I know I could figure this out, but there's someone out there who already knows how to do this better that can save me time, that can save me energy, that can save me money. Let me go and ask them. Let me go and have them do it. Let me go and you know figure out what their system is like. Um, and, and it's so valuable. I think the biggest, most powerful lesson that I've learned in my life and the universe um, has taught me over and over is humility. Humility, humility, not in, the, in not only in the sense that I'm not better or worse than anyone else. But to be humble with where you're at because no matter what level you're at or how much you know or don't know, there's always going to be people that know more. There's always going to be people that know less. So just be humble with where you are. And yes, give yourself credit for the things that you do know and be humble about all the shit out there that you don't know and that there are literally millions of people out there that can do it better than you can do it. And you have an opportunity, you have a choice, first of all, to either judge and belittle yourself and use that as an excuse, oh, I'm never gonna be as good as them, or you, it, you can use it as a tool to be humble and say, okay, there's a lot of people out there better than me. Let me go and learn from them. What, 
what do I need to learn? How do I get my business like them? How are they doing their business? I, that's what I'm doing with a lot of my online coaching business. Why is their content better? Why is this clicking so much more? What are they doing? How can I learn about content creation? I don't know this stuff. How is how are they you know manipulating their business and making more money than me when we have roughly the same amount of clients? How do I, how can I learn? So teach me. So humility, man. I don't know, and I'm open to receiving help and support. So whatever your goals are, whether it's uh you know finding a partner of your dreams or creating this relationship that you want or fixing the relationship that you have or um, creating this new business or making more money or pursuing you know a different path altogether or um, learning uh, how to be a good oil painter or um, you know you want to take up uh, golf for the first time you want to learn how to swing a golf club dude you just have to humble yourself with where you're at without judgment don't beat yourself up I don't know shit blah 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 that's not what it's about don't shame yourself it's about being humble being aware loving yourself being respectful of the things that you know and don't know and understanding that there's an opportunity to learn there's an opportunity to grow so don't use it as an opportunity to beat yourself up and shame yourself when you don't know something use the humility to be comfortable with where you're at and then set your sights on where you want to go and open yourself to receiving from the people that can teach you because uh, again there's always going to be people above you there's always going to be people below you so that shit's irrelevant just focus on what you want and focus on learning and growing with what aligns with your heart with what makes you excited that's why um, I'm realizing this is the secret to life and the secret to happiness. There's no secret. The secret is pursue something that you like doing and learn how to get paid for it. And then you're just doing what you like and then you're automatically fulfilled. That's what I'm doing. I love lifting weights. I'm going to get even better at it. I'm going to get even better at changing my body composition so I can empower and um, educate people on how to do the same for themselves. So we only learn or we learn and grow the quickest by being humble and open to receiving help and support from others. That's what I've learned and that's what this video is about. So if you're struggling with something in your life, if it's health, good, go find a health and fitness coach. I'm happy to help. Uh, if you're struggling and suck with your money, go talk to somebody who's really good with their money, who's building wealth, who has control over their emotional spending habits. Go and do that. If uh, you wanna be like this uh, dude who gets all the chicks, go and study and learn from him. What is this guy doing or not doing that he's like that? Um, if you want to learn how to, you know, again, be an artist, good. You know how many good artistic people and courses and education there are? Say, I don't know shit about art. Um, go and freaking learn from an artist. The last example I'll give you is um, when I started taking up golf when I was in my early 20s, I knew I wasn't going to be able to play sports aggressively and like at the level and intensity I want forever. So it's like, golf seems good. Let's just go try. I knew that golf, even though I'm a confident athlete and like I'm good at all physical things, um, I knew that golf was something different that I was like, there's some kind of different like skill set that the athleticism will transfer to, but I need to like go and see a professional. So I didn't even try to swing a golf club on my own. I found this dude on Craigslist, paid him 40 bucks. He was an ex PGA professional. And I had the best first experience learning how to swing a golf club. I was sw swinging in a six iron, like 190 yards my first time out ever. And I was like, I fell in love because he was sitting there coaching me. So I didn't knew that I needed help, that this is something I want to do, and that yes, I could learn on my own, but I really needed help, and it would save me a lot of time and energy. I think the same, actually, what I'm realizing goes along with fitness as a coach. A lot of people, I've had this happen in the past, think that they need, they need to be at a certain level of fitness, or I need to get myself back in the gym before I go see a trainer. Couldn't be farther from the truth. If you're starting from zero, square one, that's the best time to get a trainer because then that person can show you the quickest route from A to B so that you're not spinning your wheels for a couple months like getting frustrated with all the work and the effort you're putting in. You can start on positive habit changes and most importantly, safety and effectiveness from the beginning. That way you don't have to screw around and like waste your time and get, again, go into the gym for a month and make all these changes you think are helping uh, and then not really seeing results. I, I hear that shit all the time. So go and see the trainer right away. Go and see the teacher right away. You're not going to say, man, I want to learn Spanish and then read a bunch of shit on your own and then go hire a Spanish teacher. Best thing to do is go hire a Spanish teacher. Tell me where to start. What's the best way to go about learning this so I retain everything and learn it more quickly? That's our opportunity, guys. So um, saying a lot of the same things now as we go over, I think you get my point. Wanted to give you a few examples. It's important to be humble. If we're not humble with where we're at, then we cannot look for help and be open to the different uh, avenues that the universe will present to us. Um, so humility is a huge one, or at least it has been for me. Don't compare yourself with others, because shit, dude, 
There's people better than you. There's people in worse than you. It's just the way it is. It's all going to be like that. Don't worry about that either. Just be humble and say, I have things I want and need to learn. And then the next question is, who can I go and learn from? Who can I go and ask? So important. We can skip so many freaking steps by just following and listening to people that have done this before. And that's the last thing I'll say. Make sure that the person you're following and learning from has done it themselves because the reality is if they haven't done it themselves maybe they're practicing it and they can help you a little bit but if they really haven't done it themselves they really you're missing out on a huge um i think or an essential part of learning which is involvement and experience if this guy's trying to tell you how to make a million dollars but he ain't a millionaire he don't know what the fuck he's doing he hasn't done it if this guy's telling you how to get a six pack he does not have a six pack he does not know how to do it. He's, you know, maybe he has in the past or whatever. So yeah, they just make sure they've done it before. Um, you know, you really want to make sure that the teacher has the experience because there's an element there that you just cannot uh, explain and teach others with unless you have gone through it. And I've experienced this myself as a trainer. Like I said, when I first started training and thought I knew all this shit, wasn't that I wasn't getting people results? I just realized after I had really transformed my body how to really do it and i'm still learning again humility man i i'm still learning i don't know shit so be humble don't compare yourself ask people for help it saves us so much time and effort